I'm Greg Rush with Buy a Vet, and I'm here with Patrick, one of our uh, nicest salesmen. I use that, uh, all salesmen are nice here. But Patrick uh, was a mechanic uh, with our shop for a couple of years and then moved on to the sales floor. Uh, today we're looking at a 1966 Corvette convertible, which is, uh, has the special 350 horsepower engine. Uh, we also got with us uh, Jack Stanford, who's our senior buyer, and Jack's going to say a couple of words when we get around to the side exhaust. Uh, I want to, first of all, talk about when you're buying a Corvette, it's so important to look at the fit and finish, how the lines line up around the headlight buckets, uh, the lines around the hood. It's usually a dead giveaway if things are crooked, and the lines are different from the top to the bottom and reversed on the other side. It usually indicates that uh, there's been a, a new front end put on a car in aftermarket fiberglass. Uh, some of the things to look for is a nice thin lip. That's the way they came from the factory. You can follow this lip all the way around and also how it rounds off the top. That's correct. If it's fat and you see some irregularities, it generally indicates that some fiberglass has been replaced. Now up underneath, sometimes if you go to a Corvette show, you'll see uh, people feeling up underneath. What they're doing is feeling for a bonding strip. But just because a car has a bonding strip doesn't mean that it hasn't been hit. Because you can buy a new one-piece front end as opposed to the way the car was made. I think there was some like 23 pieces of fiberglass that was used to put together a, a Corvette back in the mid years. But you can buy one piece front end and glue a bonding strip in there. And uh, that's uh, just trying to fake it a little bit. But anyway, the, there's actually a seam, original factory seam that went right through about this area. And those panels were put together in a bonding strip was put at the back of it to hold the pieces together. So anyway, we'll get into other little details. This particular Corvette uh, has got the original shielding that goes across the spark plugs. That was done to keep the static out of the AM radio. Uh, if you took this off and put your radio uh, on AM, put it in neutral and idle it up, you hear a buzz that runs the same as the RPM of the car. And it's because the, the sound is, and it comes in the radio, is because of the little arcing when the rotary spins around the distributor and there's a little spark, and that little spark creates like a radio wave that causes interference. Uh, again, back to the seams and all you can see how beautiful this car the seaming is there's another bonding strip up underneath here and it runs about this area when we put the car up in the air we can actually point those areas out to you you know you can buy a corvette and everybody talks about well is it matching numbers well we'll show you that in the video yes this is this particular one is but to turn around and uh buy a car that doesn't have good bones. I mean, the framing must be uh, in excellent condition. The body panels, that's where your cost really is if you're restoring a Corvette. If you do not have good body panels, good frame, you can spend a lot of money and still not have uh, something of value. But if you're shopping for a Corvette, make sure that at least you're getting one with a good frame, good body panels. If the engine is worn, that's very inexpensive to rebuild an engine. But uh, anyway, let's move on. Patrick, you want to talk, show how the top and about the nice frame around the top. Good quality chrome on the hinges. Well, that looks like a condition, like it's uh, new. <laughs> Carpet and all is real nice. The backs of the seats, a lot of people don't look at the backs of the seats. These are in good condition. You want to put the car up on the lift and we can turn around and talk about some other items as it's going up. 
This is an originally a side pipe car, and that's where Jack's going to come in and tell us. There's, uh, there we go. Let's put the car up on the in the air. Now we're on the other side of the car with uh, Jack Stanford, and Jack's going to explain what is the dif difference between an original side exhaust Corvette and not. How can you tell the difference? Well, some people that that's important, but most side exhausts have been added after uh, they were uh, purchased uh, new. So, Jack, you want to talk about the, sure. in, the tabs? And in 1966, there was roughly 3,600 cars that came factory equipped with side exhaust, and this is one of them. And what you'll see with the side exhaust cars from the factory is they have these notches that are below every screw hole for the side exhaust cover. Um, the, the cars that had under car exhaust actually had tabs that were that came down it, it, uh, like this and then the rocker panel screwed to those tabs. So when you're retrofitting uh, under car exhaust with side exhaust, you cut the tabs off. So when you remove the cover on those cars, you can actually still see the tabs where they've been cut. This one obviously has no tabs and it has the notches, therefore meaning this car was originally equipped with the side exhaust. Also up here, there's a ground strap, which is a lot of times not on the cars um, without them. Um, and then also the dust shield, which is gonna be hard to see. There's actually a, a closeout panel up under here. Um, I'll get up in here, right in this area. I don't know if you can see me in here. Um, it's right here and there's a rubber weather stripping piece on the undercar exhaust. With the side exhaust being in close proximity, they did not put that rubber on these cars. Um, also, if you go back to the cross member here, there would be a ground strap that grounds the exhaust to the frame. That This hole would be threaded where this one is not. And then in the back, there's also something else that we could point out. but. It, it, it won't really show up on camera, but there's a hanger up in this area that uses these two holes. And so the hanger has a nut on the inside. And on that nut, there was a lock washer. The lock washer, as it tightens into the frame, is gonna leave an indentation um, where it actually started to bite into the frame. So if you stick your finger up in here, you could feel the burr. This car, obviously, since it never had undercar exhaust, does not have that burr. Wow, Jack, that, that's, a, that's a lot of information. And for those who have always wondered, how can I tell if my side exhaust uh, is real or not, or came originally with the factory? That's some very good information. Well, you're underneath the car. Could you show sure. the date, uh, the uh, stamping on the end, uh, excuse me, transmission and and point that if out. If you look right up in this area here where the light is, you'll see the stamping. And that is gonna be the year model and then also the last six of the VIN number. And this number matches the car's VIN number. So that states that this transmission is matching numbers. We um, all know that uh, years ago when this matching numbers was not even talked about back in the 70s, when these cars were about 10 years old and stuff like that, somebody had a problem with the transmission. It wasn't uncommon to just go buy one and swap it out or buy a used one that was rebuilt and swap them out. So Correct. it's nice to see that uh, the original transmission uh, survived with this car as well as uh, and other components. You want, we'll the, rear the rear end, end do you want to talk well. about the rear end? Yeah, there's a date code on the bottom of the rear end, which is going to be very, very difficult for you to read. Um, most of it is gone. It's not a very good location uh, for preserving the numbers. Um, but if you look right there, you can see the 65. So that tells us that this car, or that rear end, was assembled and built in 1965, which very well could be the one that came in this car. There is not a VIN number on the rear differential linking it directly to this car. But, you know, if the date matches, then you, you pretty much assume that that could be the original one. 
Now, Patrick, you've gone over this car. How many times have you replaced what is an important uh, component is the half shafts. That's, that's half shafts are the support that uh, keeps the, the wheels aligned and et cetera. That's a, that's a big job, isn't it, usually it to is cut those things job. out. And, mm -hmm. and you can see in the condition of this one that it's, uh, they're in good shape. Oh yeah, and the trailing arms, you can tell, have been redone pretty recently as well. Uh, the, um, the trailing arms, you know, if the trailing arms aren't right, you can give it gas and uh, the car darts to the right. You let off the gas and then the car goes back to the left. So that's a pretty good sign that you've got a problem with the trailing arms, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, well anyway, uh, we'll just point out quickly in the video, uh, does anybody have a flashlight? You do, good. And Rick, uh, our cameraman, will take us around. Is it better with can, or without the flashlight? Can you see that bonding strip in the camera? Right up here, that see it there goes yep. forward and backward. That's what they call a bonding strip, where this bottom panel was uh, formed, and then the upper body panel, and that's where they were glued together and then put in with the bonding strip. And they're the same on both sides, and uh, that's what we look for: front, rear bonding strips. But anyway, that gives you a good idea of the uh, some information about what to look for in a Corvette. And Thank, go ahead, uh, As John. Greg was referring to earlier, the bones of the car, the, the frame, if you stick your finger in the frame, a lot of cars you'll feel some scaly, whatnot, and the, the metal is thin. This one is nice and thick, so you can tell that it's never been exposed to any kind of elements that would rust the frame from the inside out. That's so true. And of course, if you see that uh, there's welding going this way on the frame, that's a problem because that's where a Corvette was cut in half and maybe put together. So we, we don't have those offered at Biovet. We only offer Corvettes that's got good frames that uh, safe. That's what's important. Okay, well, thank you for watching the video. Hope uh, the information will be helpful in uh, your uh, hunt for a Corvette. Thank you.